بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم قال الله تعالى في كتاب الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم و وقد دار ربكم ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا إما يبلغن عندك الكبراء أحدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وكل لهما كولا كريما صدق الله العلي العظيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah 17, Ayat 23, uh, your Lord has decreed that you worship no one but him and do good to parents, to your parents. If any one of them or both of them reach old age, don't say to them even oof uh, and address them with respectful words, with honorable words. It says uh, even if there was something smaller than uff, Allah would have used this as very, uh, the smallest word we could use, just something just saying uff. Uh, the last greater sin that we talked about was murder. And now we, that was the fifth one mentioned in the book. Now we're on the sixth greater sin, disobedience to parents. <clears throat> inshallah, you could use this as resource for, for later time. You can show your kids, inshallah. So if they're giving you a hard time, uh, it says uh, the sixth greater sin is to be disobedient to one's parents, as expressly mentioned in the traditions from the Holy Prophet and the pure Imams, alayhi wasalam. Um, we mentioned this verse in the beginning that Allah has commanded us to be good to parents. Also, we see that Imam Sadiq, alayhi salam, he says, Kindness towards parents is the proof of one's having recognized Allah. Because no worship pleases Allah as much as showing respect to one's parents. So we see that when we witness someone who's kind to their parents, a believer who's kind to his parents, they realize that, you know, this is one of the proofs of having recognition of Allah. Because Allah says worship, uh, um, to worship him, and do good to parents. They're joined together. He said, uh, tradition of the Prophet ﷺ says that the greatest sins are shirk and to be disobedient to one's parents. The seriousness of disobedience to parents as a greater sin can be gauged from the fact that the Holy Prophet has mentioned it along with shirk, which is the greatest of all the greater sins. So disobedience to parents is a sin. The punishment punishment of which is promised in the Quran, also traditions. It's, it says, uh, Isa alayhi salam says in Quran, and it says about Isa in Surah Maryam, ayat 32, and dutiful to my mother, and he, Allah, has not made me insolent or unblessed. As Isa alayhi salam didn't have a father, his mother alone is mentioned. Uh, in the same surah, both the father and mother of, uh, of Yahya alayhi salam are mentioned. So we see that <clears throat> one of the characteristics, the honorable characteristics that Isa alayhi salam mentioned is that Allah has not made him insolent or unblessed. Uh, it says these verses mention three characteristics of disobedience uh, to parents or a disobedient child. First one, Jabbar, insolent, or being boldly rude or disrespectful or uh, insulting is what insolent. We go to the definition of that word. Then uh, Shaqi, Shaqi is also being uh, rebellious and this, it says unblessed here as their translation. To be um, wretched, there's a lot of words that go with this. And the third one is Asi. Asi is uh, to be disobedient, to be sinful. It says each of these negative qualities render one liable for severe punishment regarding Jabbar and being insolent. The Quran says in Surah Ibrahim, ayat 15 through 17, 
and they asked for judgment, and every insolent oppressor was disappointed. Hell is before him, and he shall be given to drink of festering water. He will drink it little by little and will not be able to swallow it agreeably. And death will come to him from every quarter, but he shall not die. And there shall be venomous chastisement before him. So we see that this is mentioned for the first uh, term, Jabbar. The one who is Shaqi will be punished as follows. Allah says in Surah Hud, Ayat 106 through 107. So as to those who <clears throat> are Shaqi, they shall be in the fire. For them shall be sigh sighing and groaning in it, abiding therein so long as the heavens and the earth endure, except as your Lord pleases. The third characteristic, those who are Asi or disobedient, will be dealt with severely by Allah, as he mentioned Surah Nisa, Ayat 14, whosoever disobeys Allah and his messenger and goes beyond his limits, he will cause him to enter the fire to abide in it, and he shall never have, and he shall have an ab abasing chastisement. So we see that all three of these characteristics are condemned in the Quran with punishment of hellfire. So we see that they are all part of these greater sins. Uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi says, "Beware, abstain from angering your parents." The fragrance of paradise is perceived even at a distance of a thousand years, but those who are disobedient to their parents and who cut off ties with relatives will not be able to even smell it. So they'll be so far removed from Jannah that they won't be able to uh, even smell that. Even Jannah is smelled at a thousand years of uh, length of time and distance. So we see the magnitude of uh, and the importance of being respectful and kind to our parents. We can't cut ties with our relatives, even though we want to. Sometimes uh, it's natural. Uh, sometimes there's a clash and people want to cut ties, but we shouldn't cut ties with our relatives. Uh, I know many people, um, they've had bad experience with their parents before maybe they uh, went through divorce, parents weren't around, and uh, they didn't want anything to do with the parents. But, you know, if it wasn't for Islam, uh, they would have cut off their parents. But due to this teaching that Islam says that we should not cut ties with our relatives, they, um, you know, mended the relationship with their parents, <clears throat> and then they became like best friends. Uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi also said, the one who displeases the parents, it is as if he has displeased Allah. One who angers both of his parents, it is as if he has angered Allah. So even if you anger, what, you upset one of them, you displease one of your parents, is the, equal to the displeasure of Allah. Because Allah has commanded us to do good to them and to obey them, with conditions, of course, that they do not uh, command us to do haram or these other things, or if they're displeased with you because you're doing something that uh, Allah has commanded you to do, then these are exceptions. But in general, the, um, uh, who, he who displeases his parents displeases Allah, and if you anger both of them, then it's as if you had angered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because his he puts his displeasure in this act or his uh, anger in this act. So when you commit the act, then you have earned the uh, displeasure or the anger. The same thing, Allah has placed his uh, pleasure in certain acts. When we do those certain acts, then we attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said elsewhere, it's mentioned, one who hurts his parents hurts me. And one who hurts me has hurt Allah. And the one who hurt, hurts Allah is accursed. So we see that the, the prophet has uh, mentioned this very clearly that the anger of the parents is as if you are hurting Rasulullah and we would never want to hurt the prophet. So we have to make sure that we please our parents and that the, the, our children also know these um, narrations and things. So they see the importance of these things. The Prophet has also stated, Allah will not speak to three different types of people, three kinds of people on day of judgment. Neither will he have mercy on these three kinds. 
nor will he purify their sins. Uh, it says for them is a very horrible chastisement. Those three types of people are the believers in destiny, meaning uh, destiny, those who believe that everything is preordained by Allah that Allah has predestined every single thing and we have no control and we are like uh, robots. Uh, this is uh, the belief in Jabr. This is one group. The second group, those people who uh, are drunk uh, drunkards or they drink alcohol. Third group, are those people who disobey their parents. So we see that this disobedient, the ones who are disobedient to their parents are uh, joined in with these other groups on, on day of uh, judgment. And some of us, maybe we would never think about drinking alcohol, would say, no, haram, haram, but we disobey our parents, treat our parents bad, swear at our parents, or whatever the thing is, uh, being disobedient to them. But it's right alongside with these people who are uh, drinking alcohol. It reminds me of those people who they drink alcohol, but then when they bring the food, it says, you know, it's my food halal or my food, you know, they want to make sure their food is halal, but they're drinking alcohol at the same time and only fooling ourselves with that. You know, a lot of times that um, we would do all these good deeds, but then we do this thing. Uh, we think we're in a good spot, but we'd be disobedient to our parents. We're crossing out many are canceling out all the other stuff we've been doing. So we notice the emphasis that a lot uh, the religion puts on the importance of treating parents well. You know, our teachings are unlike what we find in the West where there's, we see an abundance of disrespect shown towards parents, shown towards elders, shown towards teachers or anyone uh, that they want you know, it's a lot different, you know, a lot of these things are, they imitate them from what they watch on television. The majority of the shows that are for the youth, uh, the main characters are shown and they're disrespecting their parents, they're disobeying their parents. And then it seems like this is the normal behavior of a person their age. So they say like someone in middle school, they say, oh, well, they act like this and this is the famous person. They're on TV and this is showing the model of how American families should go and how they are. And they openly disrespect their mother. They disrespect their father. They disobey them and all these things. And the kids start imitating these things. So we have to be very careful on what we teach our children because uh, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, you know, be mindful and take care of teaching your children uh, the right way before the corrupted people come and, and uh, proceed to corrupt them and teach them their ways. So we need to be uh, proactive, teach the children at home, and not just rely on taking them to center one time a week, because that's not going to do it. That's something, but we need to do it from inside the house to teach them, give good examples, all of these things. Even if we just read one narration after Salat a day with our kids, they'll be learning something every day. Or we give examples, we see bad behavior, we show them, you know, is this good? You know, do you think Prophet Muhammad would like this? What, what way uh, do you think is the right way to act? And, you know, show the repercussions of acting the wrong way, what will happen, many things. He said the, the wretchedness of uh, being disobedient to parents is sufficiently evident from the fact that the trustworthy angel Jibra'il uh, has cursed him and said, one who is blessed with parents but does not fulfill their parents' rights will not be forgiven uh, his sins by Allah. When Jibra'il said this, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, uh, said after it, I mean, and then, uh, so we see that uh, Jibra'il has said this, the one who does not fulfill the rights of the parents uh, will not be forgiven. And Prophet agreed with him. I Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, cursed, cursed is the one who beats his parents. Cursed is the one who distresses his parents. So we see, obviously, if someone hits their parents, uh, we see this now, we see youth, they're fighting their parents, uh, hitting their parents, taking advantage of their uh, parents, they cause distress to their parents, uh, you know, 
a lot of stress is from the from the children acting out. But we have to find out what is the reason, like why are they acting out? What are they doing? And and try to find a solution for that. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, Allah will not accept the salah of a person who stares angrily at his parents, even though his parents are unjust. So even if your parents are unjust and do something wrong, we still cannot even, we, can, we cannot stare at them angrily. Uh, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam mentioned that he said, one form of hurting your parents is giving them a mean look. Even if our parents are unjust, we still owe them the right of being kind to them. We still have to remember how did uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi deal with people? Uh, how did he, we think of examples of, of people like the lady who would throw garbage uh, on him and how he checked on her when she was sick. You know, so when we think about our parents, uh, we we still owe them rights. We have to think of the Prophet was a mercy to the world. So even if someone treats us bad, they're our parents. Okay, uh, you know, we will not take that out on them and we will still be kind and be respectful to them. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said that uh, he narrated a hadith which goes back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. <clears throat> He said, certain categories of people of my community or of my nation, my ummah, will not be answered when they supplicate to Allah. So certain groups of people, when they call on Allah, Allah will not answer them. No matter how much they call or what they are asking. Uh, it says one of those groups is a person who curses his parents. Someone who swears at his parents you know, opposite of giving our parents, you know, evil glares or evil stares and the bad look, uh, the prophet, he said, when a person looks at his father or mother with affection and with kindness, this act of his that he does this, it's counted as ibadah, as worship. So Allah has made it very easy for us, even if we just look at our parents in a nice, kind way, an affectionate way, and treat them nice, all of this counts as worship, subhanAllah, something that we don't even really pay attention to, something that we think is small, is counted as worship. Uh, there was a young man on his deathbed, uh, then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi came, he sat near this uh, youth, he told him to say shahadatain, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, but this person, he couldn't speak. He couldn't say anything. The prophet asked him if his mother was there. A woman was sitting near uh, the head of the youth. He sa she said, yes, I'm his mother. So prophet said, are you upset with this young man? You know, do you have any problem with him? Is something going on? She said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. We haven't spoken to each other in about six years. So the prophet said, uh, you know, ask his mother to forgive him, you know, just have mercy on him for my sake and forgive him. So when the prophet told her this, she forgave his mistakes and all that was done. At once, whenever his mother forgave him, uh, he was able to say his shahadatain, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So this act that his mother was displeased with him was blocking him from saying shahadatain. It was an obstacle on his deathbed because they let so much time go between them uh, that he basically cut relations with his mother. Uh, Sayyidah Fatima Tazahra alayhi salam, she said, uh, Allah had made kindness to parents as a protectional shield to his wrath and displeasure. And Allah made joining and connecting with the kin the cause of lengthening of life. So when we are kind to our parents, it is a shield. It's like a shield that will protect us from his displeasure. Because as long as we are being kind to our parents, Allah is pleased with this act. And uh, to keep relations with our family, you know, this is the way to lengthen one's life. When we uh, cut relation with our family members, it shortens our lifespan. 
uh, our lifespan can be altered. It can be lengthened or it can be shortened. Allah knows the ultimate day that we will die, but there's some fluctuation that we can do on our end. Maybe we're supposed to die. Uh, it's written for us, you know, maybe f let's say 50 years old, but we give sadaqah. This extends our life. That we be kind to our parents, we, we keep the relation with our family, lengthens our life. As we mentioned before, uh, other times that, um, for example, the lady who um, had just gotten married and uh, the prophet uh, Isa alayhi salam, saw that, he told his disciples, they're celebrating now, but tomorrow they'll be crying. The tomorrow came, uh, you know, something happened. So prophet went and Asa, he went to the house. He asked to look around. He looked under the bed and saw a snake there. And he said, you know, what did you do? And she yesterday, like, recounted me what happened. And she said, oh, someone knocked on my door and asked for something. So I gave a charity to that person. He said, this snake was supposed to bite you and your life was supposed to end last night but since you gave sadaqa your life was lengthened and this snake it died so we see here that uh her life was lengthened due to giving sadaqa that's one of the reasons um sadaqa prevents uh calamities it prevents and also lengthens the life so it's good to set some money aside every day or even you give a charity uh, with the intention that this, like uh, $30, for example, but this intention of this money is this is uh, $1 a day for me for the month, and uh, you pay it at one time like this. It's, it's good to get in the habit of giving sadaqa. Uh, so the prophet asked this young man, he said, what do you see, you know, now that you've said shahadatain, you know, that you, you, you're um, like, you're on your deathbed, like, what are you seeing? And he said, oh, prophet of Allah, there's this person, he's coming, he smells very bad. He has a hold of me and he won't let me go. So prophet told him to recite uh, a dua. Um, the dua basically is, uh, translates as, oh, to the one who accepts little and forgives a lot of sins. From the one who does little and he needs a lot of uh, pardoning of his sins. So he he said this dua, and Prophet said, now what do you see? He said that I see another person who's handsome, has a nice smell, he's coming towards me. The Prophet said, keep saying this dua, keep saying this dua. And then when he kept repeating this dua, he said, uh, Ya Rasulullah, both of them have left me. They went away. After this, the face of the Prophet, uh, it says, was illuminated with joy. He was happy. And he said, oh, Allah, forgive the sins of this young man. And then after this, this youth, he passed away. The author of the book, he says, this tradition shows how difficult the last moments are for those who are disobedient to their parents. He leaves this world in disbelief and remains forever in the divine punishment. The tutor of the Shahadatain for this young man was Holy Prophet. In spite of this, his tongue didn't move until his mother forgave him. He's saying that even, you know, Rasulullah told this person to say shahadatain, and he didn't say it. He couldn't say it. It wasn't until after his mother forgave him. So even a prophet commanding him to say shahadatain, he couldn't until his mother forgave him. And the blessings of the Holy Prophet and the forgiveness of the mother of this person brought salvation for that youth. So we see the importance of the mother being pleased with the son. He says, Alama Majlisi writes in his commentary on Al-Kafi, which is uh, the book Marat al uh, the one who is disobedient or disobedience to the parents means that the son or daughter caused disrespect to the parents by speech or by actions. Speech, maybe they verbally say disrespectful things to the, the parents, which is very uh, bad and disrespectful. And Allah would not look at this in a good light. It would earn the displeasure of Allah. Then sometimes they do things by the actions that are disrespectful. Maybe they don't say anything, but they 
look at you with a bad look or they slam the door and walk out or they oh you know and they you know make these sounds oh you know because what Allah says don't even say oof to our parents something small as that and we uh, if the children only knew that in uh, in the actions that they're doing towards their parents is considered as worship then they would look forward to the opportunity to do things for their parents. They would they would come and ask, "Oh, do you need anything? Do you want any water? Do you want something? Uh, you know, what can I do? I want to help." Because they knew that serving their parents, if they knew the reward that was behind this, he says, "Or they do not obey them in matters which are within reason and matters which are not in any way against religion." Disobedience to parents is absolutely haram. The book of traditions of both Shia as well as Sunni, they validate this. To look at the parents with anger is considered a disobedience to parents. To cause unhappiness to the parents is considered disobedience. It is haram to take any step which one is sure will displease the parents. So we, I remember I had a friend that went to Qom and he wanted to study some and become an uh, alim and things like this. But things weren't going good for him. Uh, he was facing a lot of obstacles, a lot of difficulties in this uh, regard. Uh, and uh, the teacher started asking him, he's like, what is going on? You know, uh, what is happening? Because nothing is working out for you. Um, so they found out the root of the thing uh, was the, the scholars asked, you know, do your power is your family is your family uh, excited that you're here and all of these things. But unfortunately, his parents didn't want him to go and his parents didn't want him to study and they didn't want him to move and live there and a lot of things. So the teachers actually said it's better for you to go back home and to take care of your parents and be with your parents than it is to be here. And they wouldn't teach him. So he ended up leaving and going back and just being around them, but studying in his free time and other things. He says, uh, the verses of Quran, as well as the traditions of the infallible Imams, not only prohibit displeasing and angering the parents, but also stressed that uh, benevolence towards them is wajib. A few examples from Quran shows Surah Ankabut, Ayat 8. Allah says, and we have enjoined on man goodness to parents. Surah Luqman, Ayat 14, be grateful to me and both of your parents. He says the above verse is special, especially worth noting for the fact that Allah has mentioned together gratefulness towards himself and to the parents certainly thankfulness to Allah is wajib and in the same way is wajib for the children to be thankful to their parents is these two are joined to Allah joins these two together it says be grateful to me and both of your parents and your lord uh, the next ayat is surah bani israel ayat 23 24 we mentioned this in the beginning, and your Lord has commanded that you shall not serve anyone but him and goodness to your parents. If either both of them reach old age with you, say not to them so much as oof, and speak to them with generous words. And make yourself submissively gentle to them with compassion and say, oh, my Lord, have mercy, have compassion on them as they brought me up when I was little. It makes us think that back to the time when uh, we have probably forgotten about, but how much they sacrificed for us when we were small and how they took care of us and how they cared for us to have compassion on them. Ask Allah to have mercy on them for that, because if it wasn't for our parents, we wouldn't be uh, in, you know, where we are now. They did a lot of sacrifices for us. In this ayat, Allah has mentioned goodness to parents. In the same sentence, he talks about uh, service to him. And uh, he says, service to Allah is wajib. Also, uh, benevolence to parents is wajib. So the imam was asked, you know, uh, to explain the meaning, uh, to do goodness to your parents. 
So he said, be good to your parents. And if they are in need of something, go get it for them before they even ask. So to anticipate their needs, what do they need? What can I do to help? What are they uh, looking for, you know? And try to help them ahead. So they don't even have to ask for it. And he said the meaning of the words uh, and speak to them a generous word was explained by the Imam. Uh, if the parents, even if the parents hit you, say, may Allah forgive you. Don't retaliate against them in the same way. They say, may Allah uh, forgive you. The, uh, then the phrase, and make yourself submissively gentle to them, is elaborated by Imam, saying, do not look at them with distaste. Do not raise your voice above their voice. When you walk, don't walk ahead of them. When you go to a gathering, don't sit before they do. Never, never keep your hand above theirs. Uh, we give preference to the parents. And they would sit, for example, we would have them sit in the chair. If there was one chair, we would have them sit in the chair. We sit on the floor. Uh, we don't walk ahead of them. We don't, um, you know, we let them have the forefront and uh, we don't excel them. It says Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says that a young man presented himself to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and said that he wanted to do jihad. So he came, Prophet, he said, I want to go to jihad, to go uh, fight in the way of Allah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi said, go ahead, go jihad in the way of Allah. If you are killed, you will be alive near Allah and be provided with sustenance from him. The recompense for your sacrifice would be with Allah. If you return alive, your sins would be washed off as if you were a newborn child. Saying, go, you know, go do that. You, no one can even count the reward. The reward is just with Allah. So the man said, Ya Rasulullah, my parents are alive and they're old and they have a lot of expectations from me. They need me to do a lot of things. Uh, they don't want me to be away from them because they depend on me. So the Prophet said, if that's the case, then stay behind and serve your parents. By Allah in whose hand is my life, to serve the parents for one day and night is equal to one year of jihad. <coughs> Subhanallah. Imagine that. Just one day and night, just one, one time, 24-hour period, that we serve our, our parents is worth more than going to fight in a war in the cause of Allah, defending the religion. One year's worth of fighting, is a, or the thawab of this is accomplished in one day of being nice to our parents. Another tradition, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he said, acquire your place in Jannah by serving your parents. If you are guilty of disobedience to your parents, then prepare yourself for the hellfire. So he said, we want to go get our place in Jannah, go take care of our parents, serve our parents. We know from narrations that the paradise lies at the feet of the mother. So if we are disobedient to our parents, then we, we should go prepare ourselves for a bad ending. It's going to be bad for us. Say so goodness towards the parents is an expiation of our sins. It's related that a person came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and said, Ya Rasulullah, there is not a single misdeed that I have not committed. I have done so many haram. I have done all of them. Is there any help for me? Any repentance for me? Any hope for me? I have done so much wrong. I think I have done all of the haram. Rasulullah told him, go and do good to your father in order that your sins may be expiated. So when he would go do just taking care of his father, being good to his father, it would have it would wipe out his sins. When the man left, the, the prophet said to his companions, if this person, if his mother was alive, it would have been even better for him to do good to her. So it's even better to do good deeds towards the mother. But since his mother wasn't alive, he told him to go and be uh, take care of his father. 
So we have all of these things Allah has made easy for us that we can take care of our parents and be good to them and treat them good and check on them and make them happy. This will earn the pleasure of Allah. And it's very easy for us. And if our parents are uh, deceased, we still have to do good to our parents. We'll talk about this in the next class of this uh, in the following week or so. But uh, we still owe them things after, the, after they pass away to make up, uh, we can make up prayers for them and fast for them. We can uh, uh, give sadaqah on their behalf. We can say fatiha for them. We can host majlis on their behalf so that they, uh, <clears throat> so that they uh, benefit from the thawab of that. And it's, uh, it's very interesting, you know, like how the, the deceased they benefit from the actions that we do in this world on their behalf. Uh, I remember one of the ulama, they were telling me that um, their sister saw a dream of their, I believe their grandfather, and that uh, he was eating cake in his dream. And he was saying, they haven't seen each other in a long time. And she was, you know, how are you doing? And he's like, oh, I have this great cake prepared for me. And it's like, you know, where did you get this thing from? And all of these, uh, she, you know, he was saying, oh, you guys, you made it for, for me, you know, and she was wondering, like, why, you know, like, how is this? So she woke up, and this is weird, you know, a uh, strange dream, so she called her, uh, some of her siblings, and told them about it, and they said, oh, we had a majlis for him last night, and we served the cake and the majlis, you know, so subhanAllah, you know, they did this and she wasn't aware of any of that, that, that had happened. And we see that the thawab and benefits go to those after us. So when we do things for them in this life, they it will expiate some sins for them and will also send them uh, things as a reward in the next life. So we have to be mindful of how we treat our parents. And then if our parents have passed, to continue remembering them and doing things for them and not let their uh, memory fall. With this, we'll end uh, and resume in the next class. Salla ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa